I'm here in North Carolina, where the calm has returned, by the way, and there's still a couple of trees standing. And I'm sitting on the porch, and I want to show you how you can build that without the knowledge of perspective. If you have knowledge of perspective, then that's fine, because you can use the vanishing points to check it. But let's start first with the vertical lines and eyeball how far apart these two poles are. Now you can also do a hallway in your house in, in actually the same way. There's doors probably that, has a cert that have a certain width and there's walls in between the doors that have a certain width and all of that is in relation with each other. So the, and then you can measure that. So you measure it by putting your thumb on your, uh, the piece of, of a pencil, and then see how that relates to one another. Is it one time, three times, four times? That, all that counts. And then you bring that knowledge onto your paper. So a certain bar is three times, a certain width is three, is three times another width. Are you 100% sure? You don't know. So you have to be very light in your drawing first. This is an HB pencil, I think. No, it's a 2B. But HB is actually the best and a little eraser. And then let's look up close what I'm doing here. I'm looking for all small negative shapes and they have to relate to one another. Um, the lines are not parallel, but they're, and, and here uh, the vanishing points come in, they go all to one point on the horizon, but you don't need to know when you look at every small negative shape and see and verify if that is correct or not. In the end, you can do the vanishing points and see, okay, was I right or not? So there's rectangulars, there's vertical lines, there's space between the two columns, but the, all these small edges tell you a lot, have a ton of information. And once you have the small shapes right in proportion, the rest actually just follows. So here, this is a rectangular. How much? Eyeball it. See if, if it is kind of what you think it is. And then if you want, you can measure, but that is very subtle. I think that's kind of hard to measure. Then uh, later we're going to work with the values of each part. I see that this is a square. So you draw in a square. Is it 100%? Am I 100% sure? No, I don't. So we, you have to stay very light in your approach. Now there's the roof line that I see in between the two poles. And that roof line has angles, but most of all, it has negative shapes. And now I already discover that the distance, this is a negative shape, it's a triangle. And the distance is not quite right. I can feel it, I can see it. And I'm going to move that one pole over just a little bit. It's subtle. It's all subtle, but it gives you a ton of information if you work that way. This is another part of the roof, and it has another negative shape. And those two triangles relate to one another. So here I see, oh, wait a minute. They, they kind of belong together. And I'm not an architect and I'm, I, I, I cannot build, but there is 
kind of a logic to all of these shapes. And you need to take your time to, to do this. Now my square at the top changes. And actually that was a good thing because that one line that I drew has to line up with that square and it didn't. So by building it bit by bit, there you can feel how the whole house is constructed. And then we're going to look at the different values. What is lighter? Is the outside lighter or is the inside of the house lighter? Is the wall on the porch lighter or not? But let's first finish the whole construct and then look at where we're ending up. So this is another negative shape. It's, uh, it's not a trapezium, it's a half trapezium. So do that either in a hallway or a porch or something that is within your uh, reach, within your doability. I mean, don't, if it's outside and it's pouring down rain, don't, don't even tackle that. You're making it very difficult for yourself. A corner of the house is actually the best. Um, preferably one that has some kind of perspective. And from this, what Betty Edwards calls a basic unit, verify if it's, it's correct. Now we're going to expand more and more. And we're going to check more and more. And erase whatever you think is not quite right. This is the time to do it. Uh, you can erase later, but also we're going to fill in the parts with a watercolor pencil. And um, at, at one point in time, you just have to accept that what you have is okay. So you decide that this is okay. This is now going to be your drawing. There, you can always make a second drawing. You can always do it better next time. But here I'm still looking at all the negative shapes between the two poles. That's very, very subtle. These are small negative spaces. Take your time to do this. Don't rush this because um, it's the foundation, really, of your whole drawing. And... Um, it looks like nothing is happening, but a lot is happening. And this is how you're going to avoid the knowledge of perspective and also the idea that it's all very hard. It's not hard. It's just learning to see all the negative shapes and, and, and the whole and the relationship between everything that you see happening. There's all these rectangulars they all go the same direction but they're not the same size some are bigger some are smaller but they're all kind of they have the same proportions i still have a 2b pencil and now i'm really seriously going to expand between all these lines that you see it's getting a little bit confusing so it is about time that I'm going to get some value in here because that makes a lot more clear. And um, in order to do the value, I have to have some parts that I decide that they're okay. And these are the poles. They're dark, they're dark brown, and um, there are actually three of them. And then there's the wall of the porch. And I measured it and it's like two and a half times that very first detailed things, the, the, the shape between the, the two poles, the very first thing we did. And then there is the railing. And it also adds up to almost two and a half times, a little bit more, almost three times that shape that we did in the beginning. 
And then there's the railing with all the spikes. I don't want to do that. I don't want to draw that. I think that's boring. And I decide that I don't have to. I just give a suggestion that there's a couple and they're parallel. And then you get the idea. However, I do like to draw the trees also because they're, they are, they have an organic shape and I love that organic shape. But now I realize that I need to start with a different pencil and this is my watercolor pencil. It's an 8B, which is very, very soft. So I can make super strong, dark lines. Again, I'm not going to draw all these spikes. Um, also, they, they might disappear as soon as I add water to it. This is also not a, a watercolor um, paper. It is thick paper, so it can handle some water, but not too much. I'm not really going to let it run into colors. I'm keeping it black and white and I'm going to uh, pause and let it dry and then add more lines to it and make it darker and darker to where I think it's dark. Keep your pencil sharp at all times and now it is really time to see okay what is going on with the value is the outside darker is the inside darker maybe there's a transition between the wall at the at the ceiling for example and the wall at the back from dark to light because when the light is outside it transitions into a lighter part. Um, let's make first, actually, from this point on, let's make a small color chart. If you've never done it, this is how it goes. I decide to do uh, five steps from light to a little bit darker and and really dark until really dark and then I want to see what the water does how the paper and the water and the pencil are going to work with me on this for this you don't need a super sharp pencil I'm adding more pressure in here to make it darker and I'm adding even more pressure here but I'm also hatching and cross hatching until it is covered all over from a distance. It's a solid value. They're not scratches, it's a solid value. And now I'm going to add super much pressure on it, most pressure I can get, and fill in the whole square basically with it. And that is going to be my darkest dark on my drawing. Now after this, I'm going to see what the water does when I add water to it. And I have a flat brush and a pointed brush. And um, the pointed brush, of course, is for the very thin, for example, the, the spikes in the trellis. And the flat one is for the long, could even be the siding. So now I know a little bit what it does and how it's going to work with me. The pointed brush I'm going to use for the foliage. And when I have the first layer of water on everything, I'm going to add more of the watercolor pencil to it. But first I'm going to see what is the darkest dark here. And these are the poles. So you can add a lot of pressure to it. It will set now your drawing into motion what it really is. And also very often you might see now, oh my gosh, I made a big mistake. Keep going at this point in time, keep going. You're not going to erase anymore. You're going to keep the erasing for next time. 
when you're going to do it better. It's fine. It's just a drawing. It's just a little bit of paper. Yes, you invested time, but you also were calming your mind and having a good time with this exercise. That's how I see it. Now, there's, of course, one side of the pole is darker. It's a square. And now you can see where the light is coming from the strongest, which is, of course, from the outside. So you can put a lot of pressure on it, be as meticulous as you can. Um, but now you, you decide where the lightest light is and where the darkest dark is. Don't be fooled with paint. The top part here is also dark brown. But because of the reflection, it shows as, I would say, value one or two. It shows a lot lighter than the dark brown I'm doing right now. And then the railing is black. So you have dark brown and black. Two of those bars are very thick. The other ones are thin. So work your way up to the trees, the architecture, let them play together and build it up slowly. Don't, don't start with too much detail that you say, okay, I, I know this and, and this is the darkest and then you can't go back anymore. There's a lot of contrast in the trees because the sun hits it pretty hard. Um, and, and yet it's far away. So you have to find a way to, f to make it believable that the trees are in the distance. And yet they have a high contrast. But the poles really um, are in the center of our whole drawing. And then we slowly work our way to adding some water. When you do like, for example, the wall, it's a big wall, use the side of your pencil very lightly. I do hatch and cross hatch, but it's very lightly. And I still try to make parallel lines as much as I can. This is also the time, if you know about vanishing points, to see if it makes sense, if it's a little bit what you think it should be. It has, it has its own logic. And if it's totally off, you will see. So here I'm going to show more of the direction of the sunlight and make that whole porch part darker. The ceiling is white. And yet, I still make it very dark here in the corners. It's a game with values. And uh, you can play it for a long time. And then when the weather changes, or for example, early in the morning, it will look completely different. And so it goes. Let's talk more about this. But for right now, this is your homework. And when it's dry, after the watercolor, you can add more of the pencil to it. So the pointy brush I use for the foliage more because I can direct it really precise. And the flat brush I use more for the architecture. That's not a rule. See whatever you like best. And um, let it dry in between. And keep working, keep working until you have the result that you really like. Remember also, once you start with water, you cannot erase it anymore. It is what it is. You make a big mistake, and I, I am making a big mistake, 
like this it, it doesn't I can only make it darker from here because that strike that brush stroke will stay there so be careful with not going too dark too fast I'm just warning you <laughs> 